it's the fun bit. So what happens to a royal's brain or can happen to a royal's brain in Iraq when it's kept in a situation with a lack of stimulation, complete darkness, little to no opportunities whatsoever, the following can occur. Low adaptability to change, a reduced resiliency, a reduced cognitive ability like in other studies, limited ability to cope with stress, and that's a big part of what's going to happen in the rest of this presentation. They have the inhibit inhibited problem solving. They have a lower cognitive ability to do that. And that's to do with the parts of the brain we're going to go over in a minute. They have increased fearfulness and a generalized of, of fear. And they have increased likelihood of stereotypies. If they're experiencing fearful stimulus as the majority of their experiences, but nothing else in terms of problem solving, you've got brain structures that are associated with fear responses, i.e. their amygdala. They'll have more neurons firing, more neural pathways engaging, and it's like the muscles. If you go to the gym, your muscles get bigger. If you don't use it, your muscles atrophy. It's the same with the brain. You can have stru certain structures in the brain will get larger than others. Now, what can happen then is areas that are associated with the context of fear or others that are to do with problem solving. The hippocampus, which if it's not being used in context of fear, because it allows them to understand the context of said fear and then decide what they're going to do about it that can be diminished. So what can actually have happen is a skewing of ratio of the size of the structures in the brain, skewing toward a fearful, generalized fearfulness. Obviously that example down there is from Canova. No light, no opportunities, no stimulation. That, that example is a pure example of just sensory deprivation.